as I tried to highlight a little bit in my t talk, uh, we try to find disease pathways that are important for inflammation in the central nervous system. And we come from uh, using rat models to, to find these pathways. So this is work that goes back 20 plus years um, before we had genome-wide association studies uh, in humans or whole genome sequencing. So, um, so we... The, these um, these discoveries, of course, they are now coming from the animal model into human. Nowadays, we maybe would try rather to go from human uh, discoveries into validation into animal models. But in this particular case, this stemmed really from an animal model. And um, why it is important? It's um, it it um, it might highlight pathways that affect human disease but that are, for example, not necessarily regulated genetically in humans, and thus you would not find them by genetic screenings. So we think that this complements a lot of the genetic screenings um, uh, nowadays um, in, in so revealing features that might make disease worse and that can also then be affected by uh, different types of interventions. We used these complex rat crosses and found then one gene in a metabolic pathway that seemed differentially expressed in the rat, and that made uh, also the animal model for multiple sclerosis, the disease outcome in that animal model, more severe. So then we started digging into these, these, the role of these gene in neuroinflammation. And um, a lot of the genes that have been described so far um, have immune function. So it's, it's quite clear what they should do in the context of inflammation. They uh, would uh, interfere in cytokine production or cell migration, cell activation. But here, all of a sudden, we have a metabolic gene um, that could be affecting any tissue. It could be peripheral tissues. It could be the CNS itself. But since we are interested in inflammation, we started by looking in the immune system to see whether there was any effect there. And uh, that's what we found. We found that in naive animals that are untouched by any procedures, they present with more memory T cells and effector T cells. They have also, which I did not show at the, in the talk because they only had seven minutes, but they have also increased uh, B cell responses, especially as they age. So it seems that affecting this metabolic pathway leads to increased immune activation. And we show that in the disease model, that was the case. So we show that it affects, in my presentation, I only showed the phenotype on T cells. Uh, the phenotype uh, is broader, uh, and I, I will highlight that in the article that will come out of this, but we focus on the T cells, uh, how T cells um, react more strongly to immune activation, how they are able to also acquire a pro-inflammatory phenotype once they reach the CNS. Um, we show that there are some metabolic uh, alterations in these T cells. And we then also try to find where this metabolite is produced in the CNS. And we can show that astrocytes primarily overproduce it in a short time span during disease onset and that that production quickly veins off, but probably it's sufficient to imbue the T cells with a higher pro-inflammatory capacity. And then finally, we try to push the system into a pro-inflammatory state by um, adding the substrate that this um, um, enzyme degrades, uh, which is a uh, amino acid valin. So we feed animals with excess valin, and then we see that they develop more inflammation.